because a lot of people don't know Rastafarianism. I don't know everything about Rastafarianism, but I know mm -hmm. enough to do a presentation. But I do feel my views of Rasta is different than a regular Rasta. I believe Rastas exist throughout history. But because I look at it as a movement and an attitude, I don't look at it as a religion. You know, what I'm I, saying? I agree. Rasta I agree with that. Me have, me have a talk exists. over you because you, you are the bad man for talk over people, but me better than you. See? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Rudy. Yeah, no, no problem, my brother. So, what you did in, in those two presentations is you presented Rasta as a movement against white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where people have the issue when they look at the religious side and consider Selassie and the Bible, etc., and not the core element of Rasta, which was liberation from white oppression. Paul Bogle. I look at Paul Bogle as a Rasta. I look at um, George William Garden, the mulatto, as a Rasta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people. And then we can we can talk and about and the, the yeah, and we can talk about the proto Rastas before mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Lady Nanny, Rasta. Mm -hmm. You understand? Rasta. Taki, yeah, Rasta. Rasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I think, I think a lot of people look at it different. And I, I didn't want to come off in a way to disrespect as far as Ayla Selassie. And when I talked about youth man faith, pass the coach on the left hand side, pass the coach on the left hand side, it's a You don't realize that smoking wasn't a part of Rastafarianism originally. Neither the locks. Neither the locks. And mm -hmm. how we taught them is the one that tell them that, yo, we got this from the Hindus who came to mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. the people from the East. People don't know that. Which is nothing to do with Hebrews. Which is nothing to do with Hebrews or the Bible. Called, the Vukatic, this 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 my Serbian Rasta right here, man. I want everybody to pay attention how the Serbians are are infiltrating their Talibi stuff. <laughs> anyway, let, let me mute. I'll, I'll mute my mic and you continue, Garfield. Yeah. Hold on, Adrian. Um, brother Garfield. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Peter. Adrian, one last. You say you had a second question. Say a second question before you go. No, it was the two things. So it was the, the England thing to say, I want my autograph book when you reach. Right, and the second on. one was to say, you've already addressed this Rasta thing, that it is not Christianity, it is not Bible-based, it is a movement against oppression. Mm -hmm, period. So that, that's all I really wanted to say. So continue on. Jalov, yeah, sir. <laughs> well, man, peace, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Peace and love. <laughs> All right, bless, bless, bless. Yeah, man, bless up. Thunder, what's up, your man? Before I get to Pitar, what's up, Thunder? Bro. Thunder, Thunder look busy. Pitar, go ahead, go ahead. Greetings, 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 man. Y'all can't talk about how to slice you without getting me on the show, man. Ah, oh, man, talk about it. <laughs> you're not, you're not a scholar. For this, <laughs> well, they go hate me for life. They go hate me for life when I say that. Yeah, hey, man. I'm almost done with your book, Garfield. I'm, I got like three chapters left, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the review. I'm gonna give you an honest review too, man. Okay, no problem. Put, put it on Amazon if you get a chance. Put it on Amazon, okay. and then you could tell me while you're live how you, how you feel about it so far. It's dope, man. You you really you really went deep. It's pretty good. I can't even lie. Wow. But, um, I, I got the white man endorsing me, y'all. <laughs> Yo, what I say, what I say, Garfield. Bro. I got the white man endorsing this me. mug oh, up, man. Fire yeah. burn! <laughs> Yo, yeah, Yo. man. Hey, well, let me, I'm gonna Yo. tell y'all this though. Pitar is very knowledgeable, though. He, me, and him had a discussion. He's knowledgeable, but let's let's uh, maybe you shouldn't have showed your picture, Pitar. Now they're going to say the white man is trying to take over their religion. You know how these people are. But anyway, go ahead. What, 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 what do you think? Did, Pitar, did you see my presentation on Baba TV about Rastas and resistance? Perhaps. Uh, how long ago was it? Um, like Probably like three, four years ago. I'm going I'm to um, replay it. I'm going to replay it. Because okay. I don't look at Rasta as a religion. I look right. at it as a resistance to white supremacy. That's what I looked at it as. Which That's originally, I'm going by what? All right, but right. what do you think about Leonard Howell? Do you follow Leonard Howell's rules or laws, his six point program or whatever? Nah, nah, Leonard Howell, uh, nah, he, uh, 
technically he's considered the first Rasta, but you know, when he wrote the, the book, uh, The Promised Key, you know, the, the information and understanding of Rastafari was very limited. You know, His Majesty had only been emperor for a few years. Uh, I believe 1935 is when he wrote the book, but um, so I don't. I don't subscribe about to other guys though, because you no, know, it was Leonard Howell and, and and three other three other guys that they say started Rastafarianism. Yeah, Archibald, Archibald Archibald Dunkley was one of them. I think Joseph mm -hmm. Hibbert. Um, mm -hmm. You know these kinds of guys, but um, if you really look into it, a lot of their teachings contradict with the Emperor Haile Selassie. So um, you know, I, I strictly follow the Emperor. Which is why we are separate okay. from your common Rastafarians who who, uh, who you mentioned, you know. Oh, okay, okay, all and, right. Um, I all think right. it was I think I think it was Pastor Bennett. I don't know. Someone asked me the last time I was on, man. Someone asked me. They said uh, it was Pontius Pilate real or historical or something. I think I said no. But the thing is, man, I um. I got to brush up on my biblical scholarship, bro. Most of the uh, most of my understanding comes from like Joseph Atwell. And uh, when it comes to the, the biblical scholarship side, like Kenneth Humphreys, he wrote this book called uh, Jesus Never Existed. And, right, right, right. right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm yeah. So, like, I, learned a, I learned a lot. I learned a lot of, from, yeah. about history from from um, from Ken Humphreys. But he's a, okay, he, cool. he, 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 he has some good documentation. He has a good website, too. Jesus never existed. Exactly. The website, the website is baller. Website. Right, right. So the thing is, I went back and I read it, and, you know, Kenneth Humphrey says that uh, he's not arguing that Pontius Pilate wasn't a real dude. What he says is that, they, that the Bible mischaracterizes him because if you look at the historical references to Pontius Pilate, he was actually notorious for murdering people without a trial. So when you get this other story in the bible about him being like this merciful guy out of the blue it doesn't match the historical record at all so i'm gonna have to recant what i said about pontius pilate being fake man i think he's a real dude oh. you know he's in the, he's okay. in the jewish historian books and uh he probably existed but again that doesn't mean the bible's real that just means uh historical yeah, yeah, character yeah, 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 inserted yeah, yeah. into the text mm -hmm. you know but um and uh, I haven't gotten to the chapter about you asked me about Hezekiah. I haven't even gotten to that chapter in your book yet. So I don't oh, know, yeah. man, because there's a couple of historical figures in the Bible, like Herod and his sons and, and grandson and uh, Caesar mm -hmm. Augustus. He's mentioned in Luke chapter two, verse one. I mean, these people existed, but, you know, uh, what was it? Alexander the Great in the book of Maccabees, I think. Mm -hmm. So there are yeah, some. Yeah, real say, but no but one exists. Are. What gets us in trouble is when we talk in absolutes. I'm trying to cut that out. Nothing right. ever happened. Da, 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 da. That, that gets us in trouble all the time because then somebody's going to come and find something and then you look, you know, you're wrong. So exactly. I, I, think, I think we got to be very careful. So it's like somebody said, Jesus never existed. You can't say that with 100% assurity. You can't. You can't. You know, but hey, well, to eat his well, own. I got my, I got, I I got my arguments, Garfield. I got my arguments for the existence of Jesus, bro. So you know, but you know, right, we'll, cool. we'll we'll talk about those. Well, but but uh -huh. I will say, I'm not going to say none of the characters in the Bible exist in antiquity. I'm, what I'm going to say now, though, is none of the characters in the Bible should be interpreted as being literal historical characters. That's what I'm going to say because the Bible wow. is subject to interpretation. Yeah, you're not supposed wow. to read it. Not supposed to read it in the sense that okay. this shit might or might not have happened like thousands of years ago, you know, at least according to our, our church's um, teachings. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Thunder, what's up, man? You look like you're creeping in the background. You got a problem with my Serbian Rasta, man. They'll be having that <laughs> attitude because they got a Serbian Rasta on. All right. Watch it. And watch your tone with him, too. Of course. Um <laughs> Always respectful, man. Hey, um, P Pitar. Yeah. All right. So I was the one who wanted to hear more from you, man. You know, I was the one rooting you on. I wanted to hear, and then the other uh, six fingers came on. It was, you know, the button. I want to hear. All right, let's do this. You're a white man with no hair. Is I got a little, bro. <laughs> hair is hair a a part? What hair? What part does hair play in Rastafarianism? If well, it, again, 
Good question. And again, this goes back to the, the scriptures because the dreadlocks um, is actually a misinterpretation of the Bible, right? Because the Rastafarians have interpreted, you know, the Levitical laws literally. You know, they've interpreted these dietary laws literally in the scriptures. So they believe that God is a beautician. Apparently some do, you know, that, you know, you have to have the dreadlocks. And as uh, as Garfield mentioned, you know, Hinduism was a big influence in the in the Caribbean around the time that Rastafari formed. So they got Hindu influences as well. So you mix a literal interpretation with the Bible with Hindu influences and you know, you get this uh, you get this culture that the people are familiar with in Jamaica, you know, the reggae music, the dreadlocks, the cannabis. And um, really, none of that has anything to do with Haile Selassie. I mean, Haile Selassie didn't even have dreadlocks. So are we going to call Haile Selassie a bald head? Is Haile Selassie not a true Rastafari? The last time I checked, in fact, Rastafari was a person. He was crowned Laul Rastafari on February the 11th, 1917. He became Emperor Haile Selassie I on November the 2nd, 1930. So anyone telling you anything different about Rastafari, well, I think Rasta is this and I think Rasta is that, it did. It, it is an eponymous movement, but we, when we really think about it, Rastafari is a person, and the the closer we are to following him, the, the more we can claim to be Rastafari. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah we got <laughs> Jesus Christ and we got Christians. Stop, Kyle. We got Jesus Christ and we got uh, Christians following Jesus Christ. So we got Rastafarianisms. Rastafarians are following Rastafari. Is that what you're saying? Oh, uh, well, again, the Bible even tells you that this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So a lot of Rastafarians sing praises and give praises and eyes to. Emperor Haile Selassie the first, but they don't follow the emperor. They don't follow his laws. They don't follow his teachings. They don't follow his dispositions. I got you. you. Know? I'm just saying, you know, you got Christians to the Christ, but you got so you say you got Rastafarians to Rastafari. Sure, you can saying? say that. All right. Yeah. So I'm Rastafari also... is. A... Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm also saying, you know, this is monotheism, so. If we're talking about the Christians, we're talking about the Muslims, we're talking about the Jews, anybody, you know, there's only one God, and that is Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Regardless of what religion you claim to be or whatever book you follow, you know, it's our interpretation that uh, Haile Selassie is the God of all of those scriptures. You know, he is the monarch. Okay, so yeah, Rasa, uh, Selassie, the, the emperor, he's God, right? God in the flesh, yeah. Mm -hmm. God in the flesh. All right, I got it. You so, saying like supernatural? No, I'm. I'm not. I don't well, know. I'm asking that. not you. I'm asking. Oh, sorry. He thinks Selassie is supernatural because the Rastas I, I grew up around. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's another misconception. Uh, you know, the common Rastafarians will tell you that Haile Selassie is supernatural. That he drew birds on on the on a page and it flew off and became a real bird and he spoke to animals and he had used telekinesis and time traveled and stuff. But Haile Selassie actually was never preaching uh, superstition or the supernatural. He was guiding the Ethiopian people towards science. And he was getting away from the archaic doctrine of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. In fact, he even made a distinction between historical Christianity and active Christianity. So when Rastafarians tell you that Haile Selassie was supernatural, he was not supernatural. In fact, uh, he manifested in the flesh as a natural human being so that humanity can emulate him. Because if he used supernatural methods, then there's no way that we as people could do what he did or follow what he did, if that makes sense. So he was Jesus. Hey, hold on one second. Y'all hold on one second, please. Um, so Rastafarian beliefs. There's no formal Rastafari creed. Can y'all see this? I need to make it bigger. Hello? Just, re just read it, beloved, because yeah, we right. can't see it on the video regardless. We so just, just read it. Read it. You ain't that no smart to make up that shit, brother. No. You ain't that smart. <laughs> all right, no, all right. There's no, <laughs> there's no formal Rastafari creed. 
and there are slight differences in the views of different groups all right so we got to start with that so pitar his group may have a slightly different view than your traditional right so oh, the most offensive list the most offensive list is found in 1977 in this 1977 book the rastafarianisms the rastafarians i'm sorry the dreadlocks of jamaica by scholar leonard barrett who lists what he regards as the six basic principles of rastafari he developed the list by attending public meetings and through anthropology anthropolo whatever anthropological <laughs> Uh, research into the movement. Haile Selassie the first is the living God. The black person is the reincarnation of ancient e Israel who at the hand of the white person has been exiled in Jamaica. All right. Number three, the white person is inferior to the black person. Number four, Jamaica is hell. Ethiopia is heaven. Number five, the invincible emperor of Ethiopia is now arranging the expatriated persons of African origins to return to Ethiopia. Number six, in the near future, blacks shall rule the world. All right. The basic tenets um, of early Rastafari, according to preacher Leonard Howell, included some very strong statements about racial issues as might be expected in the religion of an oppressed people living in exile. Number one, hatred of whites. Number two, superiority of blacks. Um, blacks are God's chosen people. Blacks will soon rule the world. Number three, revenge on whites for their wickedness. Um, whites will become the services blacks. The negation, persecution, and humiliation of the government and legal bodies of Jamaica. That's number four. Number five, repatriation. Haile Selassie will lead blacks back to Africa. Number six, acknowledging Emperor, Emperor Haile Selassie as God and the ruler of black people. All right. So that morphed into the modern Rastafarian um, beliefs, um, which was, I guess, put into play in 1973 by Joseph Owens, who published a more modern approach to Rastafarian beliefs. In 1991, Michael N. Jaggersar uh, revised Owens' beliefs. All right. So we got number one, the humanity of God and the divine man. This refers to the importance of Haile Selassie, who is perceived by Rastafarian, Rastafarians as a living God. Likewise, it emphasizes the concept of God revealing himself to his followers through his humanity. Number two, God is found within every man. Uh, Rastafarians believe that God makes himself known through humanity. According to Jagasar, there must be one man in whom he exists most eminently and completely, and that and that is the supreme man, Rastafari, Selassie, uh, Selassie I. Okay, um, <clears throat> God in history. It is very important to see all historical facts in the context of God's judgment and workings, salvation on earth. Uh, salvation for Rastafarians is an earthly idea rather than heavenly. So you don't believe in heaven, or I guess in hell, probably too. All right, the supremacy of life. Human nature is very important to Rastafarians. And they should preserve and protect it. Respect for nature. This idea refers to the importance and respect. Okay, let's do it. Respect for nature. The power of speech. Evil is corporate. Okay, let's do that one. Sin is both personal and corporate. This means organizations such as the International Monetary Fund are responsible for Jamaica's fiscal situation and that oppression is in part influenced by them. Judgment is near. And the priesthood of Rastafarians. All right. So with that, um, Petar, could you comment on the, if, if you want me to scroll up and you could comment on some of this stuff, man? That would that would be cool because I, I never I never talked to a Rasta before. Oh really? Okay. Oh, really? Cool. okay. cool. Not you about their beliefs, you know. Yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah. So I'm gonna say I agree. Our our church probably agrees with less than four four of those points that you made 
you know? And uh, the thing about it is when you say, you know, Rastafari evolved or morphed into this as time went along. Well, it's, it's, it's very, um, how shall I put this? It's very silly to think that Rastafari was supposed to be a, a movement that doesn't progress because as Haile Selassie lived his life from 1892 to 1975, he gave instructions throughout his life. So when you talk about race, for instance, Haile Selassie gave speeches, you know, about race. So if Rastafari, the movement doesn't progress according to Haile Selassie's instructions about race, then what are we doing? We're, we're stagnating. We're, 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 not, we're not developing. So obviously the movement has to progress. All of this talk about, well, you're not an original Rasta or Leonard Howell, or what about the, what about the elders from the, from the 1920s and 30s? It doesn't make sense because Haile Selassie lived until 1975. So we have, in, we have 45 more years of instruction that he was giving us, which we must adapt and um, utilize, if that makes sense. I want to answer this guy's question. Somebody commented, how, how highly is God and got exi exiled from Ethiopia? So a lot of people will say Haile Selassie, if, uh, if Haile Selassie is God, why was he exiled during the war with Mussolini in World War II? If he's God, how, why did he get exiled? So uh, I believe Marcus Garvey even bashed his majesty by saying, you know, he left his people and ran away like a coward or something along those lines during the war. Really, Haile Selassie fought for roughly like eight or nine months alongside his people, which is why he has all those all those decorations and medals. If you guys have ever seen him wearing the British Field Marshal's uniform, he was yeah. a highly decorated individual during his time. He was probably the most decorated individual. I think he was in the world book of uh, records, Guinness book of world records or something. But um, yeah. the reason he was exiled was because his chieftain war advisors told him to go to the League of Nations and plead the cause to the international community because Mussolini was, was playing dirty. He was fighting dirty. He was using mustard gas, illegal mustard gas on the Ethiopian um people you know he had a modern military and he was just obliterating the barefooted ethiopians who by the way were able to fend off mussolini's military for five years which is why they were never colonized only only partially occupied so there's different ways to fight you know the penny is mightier than the sword Haile selassie went to britain to plead the cause to the league of nations the League of Nations failed, which is ultimately why it disbanded and turned into the United Nations years later. But no one wanted to help Haile Selassie during that war, and they went to appease Mussolini. So he wasn't exiled in the sense that he's a coward and ran away. How is he divine? He's a coward. He was advised to go and plead the cause, and he reluctantly went to go and do that so that he could bring international attention to the conflict. And now looking back in history, we know that he was right. And we also know that he was abandoned and lied to by the international community because they never came to, to help him until at the end of the war. So I, uh, I reject that notion that Haile Selassie uh, is not divine because he was exiled from Ethiopia. Okay, let me and, ask you um, this. I'm sorry, well, let me ask you this. Um, I got one question. I got a question. Um, it's like a definition type of question as he moving on and it helped me understand him what he's saying. I want to know like what's his logic of a messiah? Is it a what's the, his logic of a messiah? Is it like a blood thing? Is it like a or dang like what's your logic of a messiah? Because there's a lot of people nowadays going around saying that they are basically like V1. They, the, they, they saying that they the Messiah. So like, and I'm trying to figure out what's your logic on it as right. you have this conversation. 
Right. Well, uh, again, a lot of Rastafarians will tell you, you know, the bloodline of David, the bloodline of Solomon. You can't be the Messiah unless you're on the Solomon's throne and the bloodline of this and that. Again, um, the scriptures aren't, aren't literal to that extent. So our view of the Messiah is that the, the Messiah is the person who interprets the Bible correctly. So if you look at Revelation chapter 5, for instance, it says God is sitting on the, on the throne and he has a book in his right hand and no one is able to read the book or to look thereon, which means that, you know, the Bible is a book that no one understands. But behold, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed to loosen the seven seals, right? That's Revelation chapter 5, for instance. So... Loosening the seven seals is metaphorical for interpreting the parables and allegories and the prophecies of the scriptures correctly. So our logic for the Messiah is the person who interprets the Bible correctly is the Christ, is the Messiah. It has nothing to do with bloodlines. He happens to be a black man from St. Lucia in the British Virgin Islands. You know, I know Hebrew Israelites might like the fact that we think Christ is a black man, but that has nothing to do with his message, his gospel, his testimony, his actions, the fulfillment of his prophecy, you know, Primus St. Croix, the person uh, uh, that we could be the Messiah. That's what? You, you said the person who knows the Bible the best? Correct, yeah. The person who interprets the Bible correctly is the Messiah. And that man is Primus St. Croix, who interpreted the Bible correctly in, in, uh, in the year 2000. And told okay. everyone that Haile Selassie is the father of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is a separate entity not included in the Trinity. All right. Um, let me ask you this. Did Rock, did, okay, I understand you all's uh, concept behind Selassie to an extent. Do you believe we had, it was a, a moment on the, um, Garfield's talk with Mr. Vegas. At the very end, of like the last 30 seconds, the guy said that he thought that Selassie was perfect. Do you believe that Hala uh, Selassie was yeah. perfect? He never made mistakes as, as the emperor of uh, Ethiopia. Yeah, that's correct. Haile Selassie was infallible, um, regardless infallible. of what uh, some people think. Completely infallible. I've, uh, I've searched many books. I thought I found an instance of him making a mistake one time in a judgment uh, during his... Uh, tenure as a judge when he was the prince regent of ethiopia but that was actually explained away in another book that i found like a couple a couple years later so i've never found an instance of his majesty being wrong um mm -hmm. i've never found an instance of him being um you know fallible so whereas christ for instance for whereas the messiah is a fallible man Haile selassie the father is not uh, he is completely infallible. He is perfect, and he is he is God. All right. Do so you believe what this? Hold on, my brother. Uh, do you believe that um, with the what I just read about the Hollis Selassie's living God, the black person, the reincarnation? When you do you believe? Would you compare that to? I guess that transition or that. Uh, I transition. Uh, what's the words you use? Going from the old to the new. It might have been transition. The uh, the morphing, uh, whatever it is, um, from those teachings back in that day in the early in nineteen seventy seven, uh, compared to I guess two thousands, right? Whenever whenever the the things change, would you view that as a Old Testament, New Testament type of deal? Well. Race was race is not a uh, I guess not as much of a factor in Rastafarianism as it once was. What do you do you think? What you think about that? Well, I wouldn't say race isn't a factor. I would say race is a factor to the extent that Haile Selassie said that it is, right? And again, when you say you know these doctrines changed in the seventies, sixties, fifties, two thousands, you got to think about the way information has changed. You know, we have information yeah. now at the fingertips. Back then. You know, guys in Jamaica, I mean, even if they were Rasta, they probably weren't getting every Imperial Ethiopian publication that was 
printed off back then. You know, it's just not logistically, it just logistically wasn't possible for them to have that information. But uh, mm -hmm. we are actually working on creating an app. We have a digital library. We upload as much as we can from Imperial Ethiopia. The books you see behind me are all Imperial Ethiopian government books. You know, uh, we, we strictly adhere to the laws of Imperial Ethiopia and uh, we publish all the, the laws online. So mm -hmm. uh, people, people can learn, you know, uh, righteousness and, and, and they can divide uh, what is moral and what is immoral according to God. Were you ever a Christian? Yes, I, uh, I grew up as an Eastern Orthodox Christian because my family is Serbian. So I grew up in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Um, a lot of Rastafarians actually convert to Orthodoxy. Bob Marley being a, a good example of that, because, you know, people think that Haile Selassie, because he was an Orthodox Christian, they must also be Orthodox Christian. But I went the other way around. And when I found out that Haile Selassie is the only person in attested history to have both titles, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, legitimately, that's when I realized that the Bible was actually fulfilled. I heard Garfield say the other day, there's no such thing as prophecy. There's no such thing as any of this type of stuff. But what is prophecy? Prophecy is just another synonym for prediction, right? And if the Bible says that God will have the titles King of Kings and Lord of Lords and be born in Ethiopia, and that actually happens, then we should recognize that. We should recognize that reality and realize that the scriptures work to our advantage all of this research about the origins of the bible and all this research that that, that you guys are doing the, the garfield university we should see that all of that works to our advantage and it's actually endorsed by god himself let me ask you do you believe that christianity should should take notes from rastafarianism and I guess, adapt as we learn um, new information. Yeah. Can, yeah, I, can I speak after his answer? Sure. Hold on. My, yeah, man, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Batar. Oh, I thought he was going to say something. No, I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that that that, that Christian should take notes from, okay, like I say, you, you, we got the Rastafarianism, you know, went from, I guess I don't know where it is now. I don't know anything about it, but it seems as it w it went from the white person in fear to black people. Uh, in other words, to hell with white people. We the blacks. Now we we're seeing where I guess whites are being accepted into um, um, into the Rastafarianism. So same thing like with the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam. I don't believe they accept white people at this point. Uh, certain certain aspects of um, Hebrew Israelism don't ex accept uh, um, blacks, uh, except whites. So, do you believe that these other religions need to take notes from the Rastafarians and, and, and start to kind of evolve? I guess. Well, I wouldn't say that the other religions need to take notes from the Rastafarians per se. I would say that the other religions need to take heed to Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Absolutely. You know, if, it, if Haile Selassie said, you know, uh, something about Israel, for instance, we have a big conflict in Israel and Palestine, right? And if we look at the disposition of Haile Selassie concerning political matters, we would know how to proceed with massive conflicts such as that. You know, Haile Selassie said that that political situation is, is incumbent, you know, for humanity. It's incumbent for them to follow the United Nations Security Council Resolution 242 of 1967, the borders of 1967. You know, international law should reign supreme. In fact, the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, of the U.S. Constitution says that treaties that the United States has signed is actually the supreme law of the land in the U.S. But the U.S. doesn't follow international law concerning Israel and Palestine. Israel. Hey, go ahead, follow. um, Adrian. You want to say something? He 
Yeah, um, I just wanted to actually add Turn on. your mic up, man. Um, can you hear me? Can you not hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear me good, yeah? Can you hear him at all? So, yes, I. Um, all right, cool. So I just wanted to add on to what you were actually saying, Thunder. So when we go to the basics of the Rastafari movement, I, I wanted to ask Patar if he thought it was more a theological thing or a fight, as in a freedom liberation movement against the oppression that Jamaicans were feeling at the hands of, for lack of a better word, white supremacy. Does he think this is more a theological based movement or a fight for freedom? Great question. Great, great question. So it did it did start out as a liberation movement. You're absolutely right. You know, it was almost like a protest to, you know, the king of England, right? We're going to worship the king of Ethiopia rather than, than the king of England. You know how a lot of Rasta say Queen Elizabeth is, is the devil and stuff. That's kind of where these ideas come from, Leonard Howell. But I will say this, we have to keep the theological aspect in perspective, and we have to keep that in mind because his majesty's purpose was actually theological you know it wasn't only po political it was also theological so when you say was it um more so towards the white supremacy or more towards the theology i would tell you that white supremacy is rooted in theology particularly roman catholicism who you know they they put papal papal supremacy above anything else so whereas we have the Pope sitting in Rome dictating to the people how to interpret the scriptures, you know, passing on this interpretation of the Bible that is supposed to be literal and historical, you know, this idea that Peter, St. Peter, was a real individual back in history who founded the church, right? We have the Jesuits who are the, the, the soldiers of Christ, quote unquote, the order of Christ, in our opinion, are their counterfeit, you know, um, you can't serve two masters. So what I, how I'm going to answer your question is this. We can either worship Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia, or, or we can be subject to the Pope of Rome, whether that's directly or indirectly. So oh. God and Satan is the dichotomy. And I would say that it is it is absolutely a, a, a fight for liberation. But at the same time, theology plays a major role because we are talking about good versus evil. And, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that Rastafari is monotheism, that Haile Selassie is the God and father of Jesus Christ, and that he's Allah and that he's every other God in every other religion. However, the only religion that this is not compatible with is Catholicism. So that is the opposition, whereas it might have been Queen Elizabeth back in the day, whereas and it might have been, you know, uh, whatever other person the Rastafari uh, members thought was the opposition. We now know that the Pope is actually the issue here, a literal historical interpretation of the scriptures is the issue i hope that answers your question man um it leads me to a follow-up question um am i allowed to ask that is that okay absolutely uh, can i add to one question about what he said just really if, if 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 you don't mind waiting till i've asked mine and then i'll mute my mic and then i'll, I'll leave everyone else to you know follow I'll through wait. is that okay same question I'll wait. yeah all right with, with respect my brother yeah so you've accepted that the Rasta movement was more to do with liberation than theology. So why is it that every single thing you say, Petar, is related to theology and not the movement against oppression of white supremacy? Why is it that you are quoting Selassie and not Leonard Howell? Well, it's because I believe Leonard Howell was an idolater. It's because I believe that Leonard Howell said that, you know, Haile Selassie is, is Christ, and he's not, you know. Haile Selassie is the God and Father of Christ. 
Haile Selassie said white supremacy is the enemy, and I, and I accept that, but I do not accept Marcus Garvey. I do not accept Leonard Howell. You know, even the Garfield University, a lot of Hebrew Israelites even talk so much shit about Haile Selassie. It's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I'm here to set the record straight. I follow the emperor and I don't follow Rastafari elders. I have nothing to do with Rastafari elders. I respect I respect the vision. I respect that, you know, his majesty awarded them, gave them land, accepted his majesty's divinity, even though it was through the wrong perspective. But I ultimately follow his majesty. So, um, and, and, and by the way, this is a church. So I belong to a church. I work for a church. So my perspective is going to be more theological rather than um, some other form of, of politics, for, for, for instance. I'm going to just say something real quick. And I will, because it was very interesting, you just said a couple of things that really stood out to me. You said something about um, um, white supremacy being the basis of um, uh, Christianity or something like that, or Catholicism. Then you said you don't follow um, Catholicism. Catholicism isn't a part of the um, part of the three major religions. Did you say something? I or said, compatible, I said, compatible. Catholicism okay, is compatible. incompatible with the worship of Emperor Haile Selassie the first, whereas every other religion is compatible. Catholicism um, is not. Um, okay. Um, they all stem from the same, same ideas, though. Correct. More or less, I guess. So, how is either one of them incompatible with the worship of any idea? Say, say your question again. How is either one of those three religions, Islam, Catholicism, and Christianity, and Rastafarianism, incompatible with the worship of any man? Well, as I, as I said, Catholicism is the worship of the Pope of Rome. So you can't you can't really deviate from that. They worship the Virgin Mary, who they think existed in antiquity. You know, are they all racist? Um, no, I'm not going to say again. Uh, back to what Garfield said, we don't speak in absolutes, right? So I'm not going to say every Catholic person is racist. What I'm saying is, no, I said, are all the religions racist? Is every religion racist? I w I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say every religion is racist. But you just said Christianity is based off of racism, right? Well, I'm saying that Christianity and white supremacy are intertwined. Absolutely. There is absolutely a correlation between white supremacy and Christianity. So, I mean, so we could get into that discussion, too. But, I mean, it's... it's uh, so, my next question would be... Catholic, I guess. My next question would be, would it is law? And the ideas of any religion that follows, though, be, have those real racist undertones or ideas? You're asking, does Islam have any racist undertones? I'm or asking, wouldn't like all of those have racist ideas, including um, Rastafarianism? Um, it's a branch of Christianity and Islam, correct? Say that again. It's a branch of Christianity of Islam and Christianity, right? Isn't it Rastafarianism? Isn't it a branch of Christianity and Islam? Is, isn't Rastafarianism a branch of Christianity and Islam? No, I would say Rastafarianism is its own thing. So you have Judaism, you have Christianity, you have Islam, you have Hinduism, you have Rastafarianism. It's its own religion. In my professional opinion, Rastafarianism, although it started out as a liberation movement of oppressed people of color in the Caribbean, it is actually a religion. I understand that, and I don't disagree with any of that. But this religion has the undertones for racist religions, correct? Which, which has undertones for racist religions? This religion that you're speaking of. Rastafarianism? Yes, if it if it's based off of Christianity, wouldn't it have racist under. Well, the original uh, 
founders of the Rastafarian movement were racist. You know, they were preaching black supremacy. You know, they were preaching that the black man is superior to the white man. But we know that all of those ideas, ideas are false because Haile Selassie taught us that all men are created equal. All right. I'm going to just say this. What we are watching now is a joke. This man is up here trolling us. And I'm going to mute my mic. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, man. I'm sorry you feel that I'm trolling you guys, but. Uh, I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Re I'm now remember. Do, how do you determine, anybody who believes in the Bible, how do you determine what's, does everybody have their own different things, what they say is literal and what's a myth or what's a metaphor? How do you determine what's a myth or a metaphor? So the, uh, the, the Bible is only literal to the extent of Haile Selassie, right? So if the Bible says God was born in Ethiopia, has the title King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that's literal. That literally happened. November the 2nd, 1930. July 23rd, 1892, he was born in modern-day Ethiopia. Garfield has brought some good points in his book where he says, you know, Nubia and Cush – and these places weren't even referring to Ethiopia in the Bible. It's actually a mistranslation. However, even though it's a mistranslation, it is actually it has actually come to, to to be accurate. So even though the Bible says Ethiopia incorrectly, God actually manifested in the flesh in Ethiopia. So we must now accept the mistranslation of Ethiopia in the scriptures because that prophecy has been fulfilled. Okay, let's, let's, let's work with that. You said the land, when you say God wasn't talking about, when you're saying God wasn't talking about Ethiopia and Kush, were you talking about the names or are you talking about the land man? So I was, I was speaking about the, the landmass, right? The landmass that Nubia and Kush aren't actually, were mistranslated as Ethiopia in the scriptures, right? At least that's, what, that's, that's the argument Garfield makes in his book, is that, you know. Um, you said the book had the name of it wrong or it had the, Landmass wrong. The it had the it had the territory incorrect, right? It had the territory incorrect. The landmass was incorrect. Okay, okay. You said it had the territory incorrect, right? But, and now you're saying that the landmass because select because somebody was born somewhere else. Now that changes the territory that God said that the person was going to be born in? Yes, that change, that absolutely, Haile Selassie absolutely changes the interpretation of the scriptures. Absolutely. Absolutely. The interpret no, man. Say that again? Is my mic muted? Oh, my bad. You back now. <laughs> Hey man, hey! Like I said, y'all talk so much smack about highly saucy. I got my, no, I hey, got bro. my blocks, bro. Hey, I got let my me, blocks. Let me, let me let me let me let me clear that up. I was not speaking to you. I was talking about something. I was typing in the chat. I did not know my mic was on. I apologize I'm for playing, that. Bro. Hey yo, I'm just playing, man. No disrespect, bro. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to hear your logic. And uh, this is you know people logic on. Um, they come up with when they do all their research. So you said the only thing that's literal in the Bible is God not knowing where the Messiah would be born. Um, I don't remember saying that exactly. But... 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to put it in my terms to understand what, what you're saying. You can say yes or no. You're too, so you said, <laughs> you said, Selassie, by Selassie being born in Ethiopia, that disregards the territory that the Most High said that the king or that the person would be born or the Messiah would be born. You said it negates what God said in the Bible. But you, and you're also saying that that's the only literal part of the Bible? Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not going to say that's the only literal part. I'm, what I'm going to say is that Garfield, in his book, makes the argument that Ethiopia, every instance of Ethiopia in the Bible has been mistranslated because the territory of Nubia Kush was in northern Egypt, you know? It was a different, it wasn't, it wasn't where modern Ethiopia is today, right? That's the argument that Garfield makes in his book. And he's correct. You he's know, the territory right. the territory was yeah. mistranslated into Ethiopia in the scriptures as time went on. However, because Haile Selassie became the king of kings and lord of lords in Ethiopia and was born in Ethiopia, that now means that Ethiopia is the correct translation since when since you want it to be not since i want it to be but because god manifested in Ethi in modern day ethiopia it has nothing to do with what i want man i'm not gonna even go there i'm not gonna even go there i, 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 I want to go somewhere but i don't even know if i'm allowed to on this channel uh i mean go ahead and ask you, you ever heard of nature boy Garfield ain't interrupted you, so you good. Yeah, Garfield, Garfield real quiet. Garfield real quiet he, right now. Garfield might be working. You know, Garfield yeah. get busy in the background and shit. Right. Thunder, can I can I make another talk? But I'll wait until these guys are finished. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, they it's, probably waiting for Garfield to hit the link to let him in. Garfield probably over there busy working or something. So, so, so far where we at, you saying that you basically saying that whoever translated them, so now it's coming out to sound like whoever translated the Bible messed up? Well, that's Garfield's argument, right? Garfield argues that the translation, the, the translation of I, Ethiopia is incorrect. By the way, everybody go check out the website, uh, the website is beautiful. Check out the hey, website. Hold on, hold on one Support second. the book. You said something about the translation. What were you saying, bro? I think I want to get in, bro. I'm trying to ask him. So he basically said because he said the Bible had the territory wrong. He said he understands that the Bible had the territory wrong. But because Haley Celestia was born in modern day Ethiopia, it changes or makes it correct now right exactly like, that's so tricky right there I was exactly like, I, I didn't know where to go with that that's like, like, hey let me tell you something man. this is what belief can do to you <laughs> now ethiopia let's trace the word ethiopia and who gave that name originally was it an indigenous african name no, it was a word that was used just like how the white folks used to call us the N-word. It was a derogatory term. It's like, look, these are the blackies over here. It wasn't a word to say, hey, I'm an Ethiopian. No, this is how the mindset, this is what happened now. Now look at this. Ethiopia was never used by the people who lived in the region of Ethiopia until Izana. During the Dimit Empire, they, don't, they didn't use it. The Aksumar Empire, they didn't use it. So what he's saying now, which he's gonna, 
which is crazy, but I understand because we got to be slithery. <laughs> you got to be slithery. Okay. No, so you got to be got it, brother is doing now is yeah, saying well, that well, the well. people who wrote the Bible got Ethiopia wrong, but in the future tense or because of prophecy, they talk about Ethiopia now because it's referring to Haile Selassie. This is brilliant by this man, Pitar. Brilliant, I say. Yes, but, it was. But, ladies and gentlemen, the word used is a word that we find in ancient Egyptian slash Kemet documents. In ancient Kemet documents, we find the word kas or kus, right? Now watch this now. That's the word we should be using. Kush. Now, there is a part in my book that I didn't put, which has to do with Haile Selassie's kindred. <laughs> and what happened is, what kills what Pitar is doing is that this kingsless he uses, he intermixes Kush and Oxum's kingsless. So when you go on the king's list, he'll have some people in Oxum, then he'll have some people in Kush. There are two different locations. He's mixing it up. So this is what's wrong with Haile Selassie now. Haile Selassie wants to write himself into the biblical text. But Pitar is saying, no, we're going by what Haile Selassie teaches. You know what, Pitar? You need to say you follow. You are a Selassieite. You're not a Rastafarian. You're a Selassieite because you don't follow. This is what Adrian was saying, my, my Jamaican brother, is that the basis of Rasta comes from those four guys. So you can't be a Rasta unless you connected to those four guys because they're the ones that started teaching Haile Selassie was the guy. But Haile Selassie shunned them off and said, no, I'm a Christian. I'm not no God in person. So he kills the whole Rasta. Well, well, well. I got. I gotta I cut you off. Burned. I gotta cut you off. I gotta cut you off because Haile Selassie never said that he wasn't God. He actually never denied his own divinity. When asked by Hector Winter in 1966 when he visited Jamaica, mm -hmm. he was asked, "When are you going to tell the Rastafarians that you're not God?" He said, "Who am I to disturb their belief?" So Haile Selassie never. He never, he never denied it. He never said that he was. He said he don't want to disturb, he don't want to hurt their feelings. That's what he said. Hold up, Pitar. You, are, you know the English language pretty well. Don't play games. Come on. Come on, Pitar. If he it, says, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it a belief? I got to put is it, a, it, is it Garfield, put I gotta put is it. it a belief that Haile yeah, Selassie yeah. is the king of kings and lord of lords, or is that a historical fact? It's That's a what belief. I want to ask you. It's, it's a, a belief. belief. It is a the historical fact. Jesus is, they, oh, hold on, hold on. The it Jesus, is a historical fact. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do the Christians believe that Jesus of 2,000 years ago is the kings of kings and the Lord of lords? Where is the evidence of hold this on. Jesus guy? Do they believe that? I'm asking you. Yes, they do. They believe that, bro. So when you say that now, you're going to say to me that you could prove he's the kings of kings how is it the kings of kings is fleeing to England and hiding on the beds? Come on, man. Come on, man. Cut it out, man. Cut it and out. I already, I already answered the question about the exile earlier. Uh, the the, the point I'm making is you can't be the kings of kings and running. You can't be. There's no way, no how. What are you running to? What are you running for? That's craziness. But I, I say to you, though. You can't, I, I, use the, you can't use the Bible. You can't use the Bible. Garfield, the Bible is the claim. Haile Selassie is the evidence. The Bible is the claim. Haile Selassie is the evidence. So when you tell me, Richard uh -huh. Carrier said that if Galatians 1, 19 is the mm. literal brother of Christ, if James is the literal brother of Christ or whatever, Galatians mm -hmm. chapter 4 tells you that Abraham is an allegory. Okay. So how are we going? How are we saying 
Jesus well, you might be a real that, Muslim. That doesn't mean the end time. No, you're misrepresenting. You see, now you got me defending Christianity. Listen, Gar Garfield, give me a talk, my brother. Don't, don't, give, me don't, give, me not, talk give me a talk, Garfield. Give, give me a talk. Give me a talk, my brother. This is what. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, with, 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 with respect, yeah, because you know, so you are the king to talk over people, yeah. So respect you, yeah. So, um, we're talking about the Rasta movement. The problem that I have is that Petar is trying to theolog what's the word I'm looking for? Theolog theologize it, yeah. In mm. other words, he's taking it along the religion route, whereas the basis for Rastafari as in the Rastafarianism movement, is based on liberation from um, white supremacy. So I would like to ask Patara a particular question. I cannot share my screen, but I would like whoever has the host to look up the term bomb yard. It's spelled Bravo, Alpha, Lima, Mike, and then yard. And can Patar tell me which part of Christianity involves a barmyard? Or which part of the Bible involves a barmyard? Oh, you spell it? Spell it again. B A L M B B as in bitch. Uh huh. A as in Adrian. Uh huh. L as in long talk. M oh, as in mighty. mighty. Correct. So <laughs> which part of the Bible or Christianity or any biblical belief is barmyard involved? <laughs> he just me. Oh man. All right, let me let what me say go ahead. Go ahead. Um. What did what that word mean? Bomb yard. It's a it's a obia yard. Okay. Oh, okay. So, and I appreciate the guests on the show, man. Peace, the panel, and back on the show. Uh, and I appreciate um, what's the name? Batar. Batar. Yeah, name? you got it. Batar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on practicing a black service, uh, Palestinian religion. Yo, we appreciate that. But let me <laughs> let me speak up. <laughs> Let me speak of it. Ain't nowhere in the world we're going to see it and what you promote. How is Elijah being the father of Jesus Christ? We're we, we not going to accept that because one is full of reason, and two ain't even of Jesus Christ. So at a certain point, you might be more believable to people because the color of our skin has put us in certain types of uh, behavior practices orchestrated by racism and white supremacy. But that's not even a conversation. The conversation is, if you were Chinese, we wouldn't believe that nonsense. If you were in Ethiopia, we wouldn't believe that nonsense. And I'll, I'll check this out, man. we way more intelligent than sit around and actually believe that nonsense. Now, if you connected high to Lassie, to like I said, original African, you might have a fighting chance. But since you're not, you take us back to that same old entity. Take them back to Christ. Take them back to Christ. No matter how you get us back to Christ, you still take us back to Christ. We are intelligent in this age, in the space age, but we now recognize that we might have just make up our own religion. Although, I got to do that a They made up their own religion, but they based it off of the trap. What's the trap? Islam, Christianity, and Judaism has been a trap for black people since they ran across it. That's all I like to say, man. Oh, man, I'm sitting back and I'm muting my mic. All right. Um, let me let me say this to everybody who loves Selassie. Selassie is not God. Selassie did nothing. Selassie is not God at all. And what we're doing is we're moving one God to 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 reach to try to let people say this man is God because he is connected. To the lineage of Solomon. You see, the, cra the craziest thing is Haile Selassie connects himself to Solomon. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, Pitar. And you, you said, you said, hold on. You said, Pitar, 
the Bible is allegory. Correct. So why is Haile Selassie connected himself to allegorical figures? The reason is because he wants to show some sort of status or a connection, a lineage to royalty. Now watch this, all you fake Ethiopian lovers. Watch this. Nobody in that region was claiming Solomon until the Kebra Negas. Nobody. So now look at yourself in the mirror and said, uh-oh, how did I end up believing Selassie is connected to Solomon? Because he said so. That's all. There is no historical facts. There's no historical facts to back up. Baba Ari, are you offended? I am Garfield. Who are you? I am I am your God. Because Garfield. I'm giving you knowledge you don't have. Watch Garfield. this. Hold on. Let me, let me deal with these people in the audience. Haile Selassie never claimed he was God. He never claimed that. So for you now to come and go around and still hold on to this, you know different than the Hebrew Israelites. You know different than the Christians you condemn. You know different than the Jews. You know different than none of them. And what? And the, the craziest thing is none of these guys, all of these guys in the audience read the Bible and they can't read it in Hebrew. They're different than you, Pitar. You said it's all allegory. You throw it out. But you can't throw it out and claim Selassie because he claims he's the lineage of Solomon. So you watch can't this. have it both ways, Pitar. Garfield, you Garfield can't. watch this. Garfield, mm -hmm. watch this, bro. Earlier you played a clip. I was able to catch a little bit of the segment earlier where mm -hmm. you played a, quit, a clip with Herbert Armstrong. Right. The, the, the British Israelite British guy. Israelism. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So he interviewed Haile Selassie in 1973. Mm -hmm. And he asked Haile Selassie, he said, wait a minute, Solomon and Sheba, I thought that was like a British uh, monarchy thing. Mm -hmm. He said he said to Haile Selassie, Herbert Armstrong said, I, I claim direct descent from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba too. And you know what Haile Selassie said? Go ahead. Haile Selassie said, well, why not? <laughs> so what that mean? So what that mean? That, that means that Haile Selassie knew that Solomon wasn't a historical figure. That means oh, that Haile man. knew yeah, this was an allegory. That means that Haile Selassie was following the tradition oh, of the you Ethiopian that monarchy. Up, that means that it's old. symbolism. How do you get that? How do you get that? Hold on, then. maybe I'm not understanding properly. Thunder, where you at, Thunder? Voice of reason. Come up in here. This is my alter ego right here. I'm you to my Go, go ahead, um, Maybe I'm not hearing properly. Did he just say Stand that? down, Garfield. Garfield. You've Stand made down. your point, yes, man. Stand down. Stand, Stand, down. Down, Stand down. down, brother. Stand down. <laughs> you, you, he said what you thought he said, Garfield. He said exactly what you heard. No, he can't I, use that. I can't. But, Pitar, yeah, can't you are, you are going to look at us straight in the camera and say that from what you just said, we didn't even yeah. hear the interview. Based on what you said, you're saying that Haile Selassie is trying to imply that Solomon and Queen Sheba didn't exist. Exactly. Rastas come get him. Hold on. You know what? We don't even need to be in this conversation. Get, get the Rastas in here, man. Y'all need to defend y'all craziness. Why am I even in this Gar Garfield, stand down before the wall of Bobo. He'll come for your bum buckler. Stand down, my brother. <laughs> Why am I defending? Why am hey, I defending you're this? silly for that, bro? Let me stay out of this. Oh, shit. Let me stay out of this. This is crazy. For that. <laughs> so now, Pitar, and P I bet you if y'all debate the Pitar, and beat y'all up. The white man's going to beat y'all up. I bet you. Mm -hmm. This is crazy, I, I, represent, I represent Serbia. I represent the country of Serbia. He, look at that. Where? He's proud. I represent my I represent my Yo, people. On. So as a representative on, of my people, Yo. Garfield, Garfield is my people too. He's <laughs> already angry. made his point. My drop. There is Who's nothing that? more Yo. for Garfield Yo, to say. Garfield, cool, my brother. Play. Yeah. I'm done. Yo, Adrian, this man is a Serbian Rastafari. Weird that ain't no more weird than, than black, blacks and Christianity, though. See how weird it sounds, you know? 
See how weird it is. He laughing at it. He can't even take it. He can't even take it straight. Uh, hey, hey, Pitar, where's Selassie right now? Hey man, I'm just I'm just trying to get to Sarnetta, man. The final Selassie. boss. I'm just trying, trying to get, hit. Trying to get to Sarnetta. Oh man. <laughs> you see, oh, you see man. the golf field. You see that? You see that? Oh, man. Bumba so, cloud, bumba drop now. He exposed himself. Pitar. So where is Selassie right now? Where is Selassie? Haile Selassie died August 27th, 1975. He was killed. He was murdered by the Ethiopians. How did God die? So how, how, how did he die? He was the kings of kings. He was suffocated. He was suffocated with an ether-soaked pillow by the Derg communist security chief, Daniel Asfau. How? That's impossible. I thought he was God. I, got the, God. I got the books right here. Garfield, I got the books right here. I'm just saying. I got the documents to... right here. But how could it happen to Haile Selassie? He got He's God. Like I, said, like I said, God manifested in the flesh as a natural person. So that the so that humanity could emulate him. Oh, no, this is the same teaching as the nation of Islam, man. Matthew hey, right. Muhammad is the same thing. It's God, the same God didn't damn violate teachings. Garfield. God didn't violate the laws of physics that He established at the creation of the universe. So okay. hold on a second. You see, you know, you know, Pitar, you know how I, I would beat you up. All the concepts you talk about are written basically it's biblical all your concepts but you're saying it's allegory throw it out but you're using the bible to try to win a conversation this to is craziness extent. but the, how the, is Haile Selassie the kings of kings when that's written in the bible and then the, you the, said the, throw it out it's allegory so if it's allegory why are you going to use it on a real person because you, you, because you, you mix it up listen when you no, no, no. The bible, and teaching, the bible this is what happened you the Bible is allegorical. Time. The Bible is allegorical to an extent, Garfield. We're not going oh, to say the entire extent. Bible is oh, allegorical. Oh, to an extent. You switch up now. No, no, no. That's what I said earlier. The Bible is allegorical to the extent of Haile Selassie's life and disposition. That's that. That's the uh, that's the extent to where. So you're and saying and right green right. lizard, green lizard to backside. Hey, so all on all on all on the pitar. So you're telling me. That the Bible is referring to Haile Selassie. Is that what you're telling me? Not just the Bible, but the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita. He said it earlier. He said it earlier. He said it earlier. He said it earlier. I'm not doing it. He said it earlier. Not doing it. Take that one in. I took the L. I'm not doing it. I just waiting. I just waiting on Robin to come in and cause one bumper cloud too. I'm not doing it. Look, when when Robin cause bumper cloud, it went down. Anybody, anybody want to come in the chat? I am not doing this. Yeah, man. In fact, when Robin, when Robin, we want to hear Robin cause one bumper cloud. I'm not being cussed him out. Nah. I got three. Still have to the Quran. Blood cloud. I got, I got I got three. Oh, no, we can't go to England. We can't go to England. You know, so the Muslim that lynch him. You know that. You know that. <laughs> yes, Garfield. I mean, you are talking now. So yes, me know that. Me know that. So me know that. Me know that. Me know that, brother. Me know that. Me know that. My channel. No, the Muslim them got them got email me today. How you make that man come on? Jesus Christ. Robin could leave. Robin could. Robin could no, never Robert go to speak as corner and leave. No. Come back America alive. Mm. He would have oh, to go back oh, in a board oh, box. <laughs> Yo, you know, so let me stop on the other Sunday. Yeah, me hear it, Garfield, but no worry about that. You're good. You're good. You're good. Not good. I'm, good. I'm not oh. talking those things on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo. But yeah. You know so just say, like as I said, you made your point. Yeah. You already do a mic drop. Exactly. The argument done. Wait, why are you still talking? Come on, man. I thought you were Jamaican, Garfield. What? What? It was happening right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Baba Ari, come on, man. Give me a chance, Baba Ari. Come on, man. Come on, Baba Ari. Gideon, you used to deal with them things. No, sir. You have to deal with this. But now, but now, deal with this. We have to deal with that. 
Oh, 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 star, Gideon, Gideon, deal with the deal with the prophet, Peter. Prophet, <laughs> prophet. Can I ask him a question? Yeah. So right, why it was one? It's like two or three questions, kind of. All right. Is is Salasia the last Messiah, according to you? Haile Selassie is not the Messiah. Haile Selassie is the father of the Messiah, but he is the first and the last, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, then, all right, then for the fun part, is there any white uh, chosen people? Like, is there any white kings and kings or messiahs? or prophets? Um, I would say no. I, uh, I subscribe to the, uh, to the idea that there is only one prophet. Um, so Moses, Jesus, Isaiah, Muhammad, all the same guy. Just the name <coughs> changes as the, the level of understanding changes. So there's only one prophet. He's, he's black and, and, uh, and there's only one God, and he's he's African, so. Okay. Whew. All right. So as a okay, as a person of non-color, I don't know how to say it. As a person of non-color, how do you feel about like all of the God people being black? as a white person? Um, how do I feel about that? Um, I would say that it's inconsequential to me because I, I don't subscribe to evolutionary theory. Um, I, I don't subscribe to the scientific racism that's peddled um, to, to the masses. Uh, I, I believe that all races are, are equal um, I, I don't believe that melanin makes you different than 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 I than I. Um, I don't believe that the, my lack of melanin even makes me scientifically. Different. You said what? You, you don't even scientifically. Not saying like my melanin makes me a better person than you, but I'm saying like scientifically, like do you witness that people are different? You know, like you may take different medication or we might have a different blood type or different hair products yeah I, I believe all people are different you know genetically we are we are different uh when it comes to like uh medicine and like allergies and stuff for sure yeah absolutely but um i i don't subscribe to this idea there's a there's a prevalent idea in the caribbean for instance where they say like you know if if you have Neanderthal DNA or something like you're less of a you're you're less of a person or something, but really if you if you look at it scientifically, you know Neanderthals are 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 actually uh, uh, just a different race of people. They weren't actually a different species, for instance. Um, and you know there, there's there's sources for that too. But uh, now we're now we're getting off topic, man. Now we're going down. Uh, yeah, we're going into something that you say you don't. Yeah subscribe to but but um, okay i'm just trying to see how your logic works you said you work in a church you're in a church yeah, we, we have a Rastafarian church in uh, in St. Lucia in the British Virgin Islands. Our church originated in Brooklyn, New York in the year 2000. Um, Primus St. Croix, the founder of our church, he was he was arrested, tried and deported uh, back to St. Lucia. And uh, that's where the church is today. OK, and just for fun, what, what race is he? He, he's a black man. Black man. Wow. What's up? Okay. I'm curious how people think. Can I, can I ask a question real quick? I hear you. All right, because I, I heard someone say, well, I heard the brother say that there's one God, that God's an African God. So when I look at the deity concept 
in Africa and I look at the attributes that are that are provided in the explanation uh, through mythological stories from one from uh, one country to another, um, this God doesn't uh, isn't how I want to say this. The concepts and the attributes are not possessed by this particular God. This God, or this one God, uh, interjects into human affairs when it chooses to, and then it goes silent, whereas African deities don't come close to dealing with that. There's always a go-between when you look at these concepts and these belief systems and traditions across the continent. And then there's festivals and things of that nature that go into the culture and the traditional aspects. So how could this God be an African God if it doesn't exemplify African traditions and, and culture and so forth? Boom, bang. You're, you're asking how, how can it be that God is an African when it's not uh, like indigenous tribal African stuff? Olane, defender of the faith. You know what, defender of the faith? Why don't you come in the chat, man? Every day you come <laughs> here, you quote these stupid scriptures and, and feel like you know everything. Come up in here, man. You got all this information and you're hiding your talents. Come on to Dagger Squad University. Come teach us. Come on down, brother. Come show us why hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, the prophecies I wanna, and all that I wanna, stuff. I want to ask answer the brother's question. Well, it was did I get your question correctly? You asked how is it that highly how is it that an African that it's an African god but it has nothing to do with indigenous Africans? Is that what you were asking me? Yeah, I'm I'm asking specifically how could you define this uh, god concept as that when it has no connection to to uh, African deities? Wow. Um, I, I, I just, I don't think, I mean, I don't think I'm going to answer it correctly because I don't think I understand the question. All right. So you said there's a, there's only one God, that God's an African God. Right. Okay. Now on the continent of Africa, there's no one God. There's a plethora of deities associated depending on cultural, uh, depending on which culture or tradition you're dealing with, you may have one supreme and then a host of lower deities. So what I'm asking is, and with uh, inside of African traditions and customs, these deities, whether lower or supreme, possess certain attributes that are uh, detrimental to the people that carry the beliefs and the traditions of that deity or that supreme deity. How is this God that you're saying exists as an African God uh, portray, I mean, he, uh, could be African when he does not possess those same attributes as other African lower deities or supreme deities? Um, when you say attributes, do mm -hmm. you mean that Haile Selassie was of Semitic origins, whereas West Africans are sub-Saharan, etc. No, uh, first of all, Haile Selassie is not a damn deity or uh, god. But no, what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is right. Was was okay. Hold on, let me do it like this. Was was uh, this is an example? Was Haile Selassie anthropomorphized? by people who worshiped him? Um, anthropomorphized, I mean, I, 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 right. that means to make human, right? I mean, I don't even know what that, what, what does that mean, no, no. anthropomorphized? All right, so let's say- yeah. Let's make, make, give God like quality. Your, your question is, is too academic for him, Sean. Your, your, you've taken him out. Um, so far into the sea yeah, that he can't swim, and there's there's water. no life flow. Br bring it, bring it back to shallow water. 
Yeah, bring it back to Charlotte. I started realizing that with my questions. Like, they, you got to bring it down, son. That's why some people still even be believing in some of this stuff. All right. Yeah, so, no, no disrespect, Sean, because I, I know exactly what you're saying, but you know, yeah. bring it bring it in a basic form, as in, you know, um, how can you say Selassie is an African god when he doesn't represent anything that African gods represent? Right. Um, let's see. Yeah, he doesn't. He right. So, so if if Hali Selassie is a god. Right, just it's simple, and, and just like he said in simplest forms, how could he be a god if he does not represent what other African deities represent? How could he be a god if he doesn't represent what other African deities represent? And by other African deities, you, you're referring to like polytheistic tribes and stuff in Africa, correct? Because before before Selassie get before Selassie even comes into the fold, or before Christianity or Judaism or the presence of Islam is is anywhere near Ethiopia, these Ethiopians had deities, festivals, and the whole nine yards that they that they. Uh, I'm sorry, Sean. One second. Hey, Pitar. I, I never got this. This guy just put this on this on the thing. I don't mean to cut you, Sean. Defender of the faith. He said, Revelation 5 verses 5 states, the line of the tribe of Judah, root of David, will rise. History confirms this is Selassie. Do you hold to that position? Absolutely, 100%. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now when you said the root. Hold on. Hold on. When you said the root. He this said is no. Clear. This, is, this, is, this is the total destruction of this argument. Watch this. Now, when the people went to um, Babylon, right? And you had Yekaniah. Is Yekaniah a, a root of David? Yekaniah in the Bible. Are you are you asking me? Yeah. Is Yekaniah a, a, a descendant of David? I mean, I... Okay, let me help you I out. Have to, yes. I have to, I have Yekaniah to. is a bloodline relative of David of the Bible, according to okay. the Bible. Right? Okay. Yet the yeah. is actually a real person who is confirmed in the Bible too. But anyway, he's not an allegory. Now watch this. <laughs> when, they, when they went into Babylon, they remained in Babylon. And guess what? You have a group of people called what? What are they called? They are called the Exilarch. The Exilarchate, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, this is actually in book number two. Let me pull it up right now. On my screen, Garfield, we let me have on. the people who descend from the lineage of David, supposedly, but they don't say David, they say Yekaniah. Yo, Yekaniah Garfield. is a descendant of the biblical David. His yeah. descendants has always been in charge of the Jewish community. Now you tell me, how is Haile Selassie connected to David's lineage? Because you said it's allegory, right? Partially. The other guy in the chat, defend of the faith, saying that it is the root of David actually as far as bloodline. Where is that bloodline leading to Haile Selassie? How did it get to Haile Selassie? Because the bloodline is documented in history. They're documented. And that person is called the Exilarchate. The Exilarchate has been documented up until like the 16th century AD. Yeah, pull out your green book. At the wrong green book, you need Russell Gamerkin green book. That green book ain't gonna help you. I want you to show me how, how did the lineage of David get to Haile Selassie? Show Garfield. me. I'm, yeah. what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is in this book, there's a lineage mm -hmm. that goes from Adam Mm -hmm. Adam from the mm -hmm. Bible, Adam all the way mm -hmm. to Haile Selassie. Anyone could write a lineage, you know? It doesn't okay. mean it's true. Okay. It doesn't mean it's true. I'm, but glad when this guy says, I'm, I'm glad you said that because Haile Selassie lineage is bullshit because he had people that don't exist in his king's list. He had mm -hmm. fictitious characters in his king's list. I'm talking like the, 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 the gods that people worship as deities, he adds them in the king's list. His whole and, king's and, list is fake. And, 
And that and that means he's not me. Hold on, Adrian. How are you going to tell me that anybody could make up Kings this? Are you confessing today on Dagger Squad University? Or oh, we got the white man to confess that Haile Selassie made this Kings this up? Please acknowledge that. Because by you saying anybody could make up a Kings this, I guess you're referring to none other. I should misunderstand what you said, like you've been misunderstanding other things that people say, and say that you're trying to say that King Selassie's Kings list is fake. Let me first tell you that Emperor Menelik II was also conquering land of him. Leave Jews. him out of this. Leave him out of this. Him and, him and Selassie is two different entities. And, and they had their own. Both of them got issues with color and black people. But I'm not talking about that now. We're talking about David's lineage. Now, let's No, no, Garfield. David chill, David brother. Chill, exist. brother. David didn't exist. So how, how can we be talking oh, about David's lineage? There you go. So why use the Bible 5.5? 5? It said the tribe of Judah, root of David. You're, you're a hypocrite. You no. played us, bro. You why? played us. Because you why? said to me, this is referent to Selassie. How could it be the re no. how could it be referent no. to Selassie if David is fake? Come on. Don't feel, don't feel chill, I said, no. Okay. Over. Come on, I man. Said, I said no. I said Haile Selassie is not the line of the tribe of Judah, and 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 I want to tell you that David didn't exist. He did say but, no. But Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie said that we must read and study the Bible. That's why, why we use the why? Bible because Haile Selassie said to read and study Get the Bible. Garfield, chill, chill. Let me just talk for a second, yeah? So yeah, go ahead, go ahead. you already explained mm -hmm. that this guy is a Selassieist. Mm -hmm. So it is with Selassieism, not Rastafari. Okay. So that argument is his dead. Name, what I'm name, saying, what I'm saying, was just, his name just Rastafari? It, was his it, name Rastafari before he was Emperor Haile Selassie? Yes, his name was Rastafari. That's not did, I'm not talking about Selassie the person. I'm talking about the Rastafari movement well, that you um, started you it. You, you can't you interrupt can't. me because I've never interrupted you. Bro, you can't. The only person Rastafari. I overspoke, the you only person follow, I overspoke. Bro. Sorry, go ahead. That's what I want to tell you, bro. You can't make an eponymous movement called the Rastafari movement and disregard the person Rastafari and smoke weed and do whatever you want and not follow Rastafari. You're blaspheming. You're bringing shame upon oh, Rastafari, man, the individual. You're associating oh, idolatry. Garfield, Garfield, don't speak. Don't speak. Don't speak. Don't speak. Don't speak. Please don't speak. Don't speak. Can, can I just finish where I was going with this? Okay. Because I, I, I have respect when people are speaking. The only person I overspeak is Garfield because he's the king of overspeaking people. So I was saying, Garfield, please just keep calm for a second. Because what you actually did was you overspoke Sean. Sean is a humble person. And he's now kept quiet. He actually had a point to make. And you actually disregarded the point that he was making to try and make an argument with Patar. So respect is your channel, Garfield. I'm not trying to disrespect you. You're my brother. Sean's my brother. Everybody here is my brother. What I'm saying is, can we allow Sean to finish the point that he was making before we get to this point? Can we bring back Sean? Yeah, yeah, Sean. No, I just, you know what? I just got a vision. So I just had to speak about what the vision told me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> respect you, Garfield. It's, it's your channel, so... You know, we respect you. You know, I'm not trying to. Yeah, Sean, I'm not trying to disrespect. Yeah, I'm about to end the show. I'm gonna end the show on Sean's. Um, okay, um, okay, but let Sean speak that? because Sean is an intelligent brother, and it's not fair for you to cut him off when he's making an intelligent point. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, man. I got a vision. I have to speak on a vision. <laughs> That's cool, Garfield, man. We're good, man. We're good, brother. We're good. <laughs> uh, so Lassie gave it to you at the right moment. Oh man. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs>
<laughs> Rocky, you ain't got no behavior, yo. No behavior. This audience has no behavior. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay, so, folks. okay, Garfield. Come here, but over talking, my brother. Adrian, but hold on, hold on. I'm Adrian, just Adrian, dealing with the Sean Pine. The Sean Pine. The Sean Pine. Sean is yeah. busy. But let him, come, let him come on and finish. I'm going to let him close out the show. No, no, no. Because he already, he already he asked that. it. He jumped off. It's just he jumped a, off. Sorry, if, if Sean is speaking, I'll shut up. No, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. I am saying that before the show cuts off, I have to give a shout out to my book. So for of those course, who have not read my course. book yet, I think you should go out and get the book. I make a strong case. You see, look at the white man promoting me. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Get, if man, you right have my book, book and y'all didn't get my book, oh man, I'm done with you. Garfield, I'm, I'm just speaking out. to you yeah. as a brother. Yeah, <laughs> Sean is my brother, same way. You hear me? No, 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 no. I'm saying yeah. Sean ain't Sean ain't um Sean dropped off. All right. So the point that the, the point that Sean made was how can you say that Selassie is an African deity when he does not represent what traditional African deities represent? Now Sean took him too far out in the ocean. Yeah. I'm just trying to bring it back to basic to say. Oh, is okay. Selassie the same as Naomi? Mm. Pata, mm. can you answer that question? Does yeah. Selassie have the same attributes and understanding from the people as someone like Naomi? I, mean, I, I, I don't know who Naomi is, but if Naomi is the creator of the universe, then that then Haile Selassie is Naomi. Absolutely. When well, I said that see, God is would... African... I'm just talking about Haile Selassie being from the continent of Africa. Um, I, I don't know about African deities that much. I, I, I really don't don't study African deities to, to be able to say, well, he's this guy or he's that guy. But, and that's fine because that was the point that Sean was making, that you're ignorant on the subject you're talking about. And that's all I really have to say. I'll leave well, it there. Well, no disrespect, but, you know, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, let me let me I say am, this also. I let am ignorant this. on African deities, but it's an absolute fact that Haile Selassie was African, so I don't see how that's ignorant. Okay, all right, um, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta get out of here. I gotta make a move. I gotta go deliver some hand deliver some books, and um, I gotta say peace and love to y'all, man. Hey, Pitar, what are you normally free? Are you normally free like this time, this time of the day? Uh, it it depends. It depends. This week I'm uh, I'm really busy, but maybe next week we can uh, we can do something if you want. Um, All right, cool. I'm 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 gonna put you up against some um, six fingers, man. He talking junk in the chat, man. He need to get yeah. on the I can't even see you, the man. chat. I can't even uh, see. I didn't have time. I didn't have time talk, to put up my computer. He junk, man. I ain't gonna let him get away with that, Pitar. Hey, bro. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all this yeah, right now. Naga Squad is the best channel ever. I'm gonna tell y'all why, right? The creator of the universe. We so. had wow. we had one dude claiming that he's Judah from Utah, right? So Utah is really Judah. Then we had another dude in mm. Cambodia from Cambodia saying he's the Messiah and he's from Cambodia. He's Cambodia. Judah. And Cambo, Cambo, who gave him the name? It was uh, who gave him that? I don't remember who gave him that name. Somebody he came that. on here with that name, bro. <laughs> yo, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, now we got Pitar beating up the Rastas. Who's defending this Rastafarianism? And Adrian, if Adrian never enough of himself, we know that day. done today. Done. Hey, man. Sure. Hey, I see I see all these people talking smack about Haile Selassie, man. If you're talking lies and you're talking smack and you're lying about his majesty, man, I'm going to find you, bro. I'm going to find oh, you. Oh, man. The white man has given Where Rocky a warning. At? Where Rocky at? Where whoa, Rocky whoa, 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 whoa. at? Where Rocky 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 at? Where Right. Dude, you got, a co you got a costume on? You, you got a Pitar. costume on, yo? <laughs> well, yeah, I got a costume on? Yeah, 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 what the hell's on. going on here, man? You got, I, I, just, I, I just got some pieces, bro. I just got, got some pieces. You got a gun on? What about your bro? head, yo? What oh, you got going man. on? My man, CIA. You got the CIA extra big black. Hold on. You got the extra big eyeglasses on. CIA, bro. Yo, you back. Hell no. I can't. I can't. I give up, yo. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs>
<laughs> he running around like Jean Claude. Come on, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you dressed up to come on the show. You ain't right for that, yo. Good yeah, God almighty, funny. yo. <laughs> and you're a Hebrew Israelite, yo. Yo, you bugged out, yo. You bugging. No, no, I'm a I'm a uh I'm a Garfieldite, man. Okay, spend that oh, money. That's right. Snap. That's right. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. I ain't mad at you. I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed bread. the read, though, because I did put some good information in there about Ethiopia. It's not yeah. Ethiopia. Hey, <laughs> man, amazing. Amazing book, bro. I got three more chapters left. I'm going to give you the review. I got to go, though, man. I got to run, but I uh, appreciate you having me out, man. You, you, you All dope, right, peace bro. and love, man. I appreciate love you coming on. All right, thank All you. Right, man. Thank you, man. All right, peace. Yeah. I gotta replay this in the car, yo. This shit is funny as yeah, you don't get no fun in that. Yo, he had the double, the double size glasses on yo, with the receding hairline, yo, with the gun. <laughs> Adrian, you ain't see the man pull his gun out. He pulled the gun out, yo. Adrian, you ain't see no, that. No, I didn't see it. I didn't see oh, that. I just, like I, no, I just accidentally um got off the chat and I've oh, just come back man. on. Go back yo, and he had the heat. Yo, had the out, heat. Yo. Dude, in case y'all be in the bed, said, I got the heat. I'm saying you got an outfit on, and he pulled the gun out. <laughs> okay, okay, but Garfield, Garfield. Yo, why are you trying to say that I was the one who saved him from burial when you're the Christian enabler? Oh, the Garfield. You ain't gonna do that today. You ain't gonna do that today. You know, no, no. You know I ramp me, I ramp still, yeah. All right, good, good, good.